All right, welcome back, everybody. We've got the final sort of keynote conversation here on stage with me. We have Jessica Bull Nielsen, co founder of Hey Planet. So, uh, Hey Planet, it's uh, pushing for more sustainable food culture through delicious foods based on edible insects. Interesting. And we don't have any on stage, actually. We should have had oh. some. That could be fun, actually, to have some in edible insects on stage. I'd love to try some. Um, so, you, you, you're a co founder. You established this four years ago with your co founder, Belena Sigurd's daughter. Couldn't make it here today. Um, but you, you believe that it's possible to rethink our food system by taking an innovative and customer-centric approach. Super lucky to have you on stage here. Um, great Thank that you, you could join. I think that we could go all the way back to the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we're going to be talking about fighting climate change with a burger, right? That's the title of this. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about eating insects for the first time. I think there was sort of two Genesis yeah. stories here. Take us all the way back. When was the first time that you yeah. ate an insect? So, yeah, we have actually two sort of parallel stories. Yeah. So my own story is uh, that I was served uh, a larvae risotto by my partner, Melina. And she had already convinced me that this was a really great idea with all these great arguments, how they're like super nutritious, very sustainable. And she said they were tasty. But um, yeah, she made this larvae risotto and uh, it just didn't look <laughs> too great. And I actually had a really, really hard time... Um, having to, to eat this uh, risotto. Like, so it, it was just a risotto with big, fat, juicy worms on top. Yeah. And um, yeah, I remember thinking that all the facts were super intriguing. So full of protein, vitamin B12, iron, magnesium, zinc, and, um, and, and very sustainable, so requiring very few resources to actually to make uh, insects. Um, but it kind of just still was this mental barrier for me to, to eat these. And of course, it wasn't a coincidence that we were having this um, dinner. Melina and I had met um, before, and we were talking about sort of uh, food production and food insecurity, all these global problems, gender inequality, uh, malnutrition in the world, obesity, all these things. And Melina kept saying, yeah, but insects are the solution. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, that sounds really amazing, but also really strange. Yeah. Um, but actually, it is just a f fantastic resource. Um, so when I finally pulled myself together and, uh, and ate the risotto, it, something actually happened in my mind because I just felt really silly ha not wanting to eat it because yeah. it made so much sense and it tasted really great. Yeah. And so why was it so hard for me? Yeah. But, um, but yeah. So, you had, so there was a psychological barrier. There was yeah. sort of habits, right? We eat certain things. We don't eat certain things, right? We don't eat our pets, but we go to McDonald's. You know, like exactly. that's the classic one that vegans like to talk to us about. And but what, so you're, you're, you're with Melina and she's made this risotto for you and you, and you get up the courage to eat it. Yeah. And then you create a business. All right. But, but yeah. obviously <laughs> not the next day. So what was the, so why, why it's, I mean, you could have just said, okay, that's great. Uh, I'm going to eat insects once a week and reduce my carbon footprint and feel good about myself. And well, why, why did you decide, okay, I'm going to, I think there's an opportunity here. So we met in a sort of an entrepreneurial environment. We were both sort of working with another startup and I had just gone out of a startup and it just kind of, I don't know, when she started talking about insects, it just sounded really, really interesting. Um, and it wasn't just sort of another superfood or something. Mm. It was actually a challenge and it was innovative. And, um, and I guess I sort of tried to get a feeling of whether Melena would be willing to uh, start a company together because yeah. she's more of a sort of a, a scientist kind of mm. person thinking about doing a PhD or this kind of thing, mm. right? Where I'm sort of a CBS kind of a startup kind of person. Um, but I could feel that the passion was there. So, and that's one of the most important things when when you start a, start a company. And so that made me feel really secure that she's so passionate about insects that we could actually create something here. Mm. Um, and yeah, obviously we also sort of looked into the numbers and looked into the trends and looked like, luckily we found out we're not the only ones in the world thinking about eating insects. Yeah. Uh, we're not the only company in sort of the Western well, world. And, and people eat insects all around the world. Yeah, right? exactly. In fact, that's yeah. just the point that we're the exceptions almost in the West. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. 2 billion people around the world uh, eat insects, Southeast mm. Asia, Latin America, lots of different countries. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. So, but yeah. there was a good match, right? So, so that was that's interesting that you yeah. was, you 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 kind of bought a, a complementary set of skills. I mean, she had the sort of the, the passion about the the, the the food, and you had the sort of the CBS startup yeah. business angle on it all. And there was a sort of a meeting of minds there somehow. Yeah. I mean, and and most importantly, what drives both of us is. Uh, doing something where we feel that there's a purpose and where we're making an impact. Um, and so like coming together and, and using all that knowledge and all that passion about insects and um, confidence that this is actually a, a, mm. a solution to uh, a lot of the world's uh, yeah. problem, problems. That sort of, um, yeah, came together. And then, yeah, I'd started trying, uh, making a business mm. before, so I knew how to go on to Vyak.Dico yeah. and, you know, get my own CVR number and, uh, and all that stuff that follows with awesome. uh, starting a company, yeah. Yeah, but neither of you studied, like, insect agriculture. Um, so neither, of, I don't think that, I, think, I don't get the feeling that either of you knew, knew actually what goes into um, producing, harvesting, storing, preparing, or yeah. what, what's so... So Melina's actually an uh, agricultural develop Kant okay. scient agricultural okay. development, fancy title, yeah. yeah. So she sort of looked into quite a lot into like insect production yeah. and uh, uh, nutrition as well, sort of a holistic view on how insects, yeah. uh, how sustainable agriculture um, yeah. is used. And she's just always focused on insects. Awesome. I mean, yeah. I'm, and I'm quite interested to hear about the products and what you guys create. Yeah. But just before that, how how do you get started with farming insects? I mean, what's I mean, where does it happen? Like, where, I don't, I can't even imagine it. Uh, yeah. So you can start anywhere, really. Yeah. Um, if you, depending on the insect. So there are actually almost two thousand species of edible insects. Um, Depending on what kind of insect you want to um, uh, grow, farm, uh, yeah. you need some eggs. Yeah. And then you need a little house for them. And then you need to feed them yeah. and uh, yeah, watch them grow, basically. Yeah. Um, I'm not the uh, technical yeah. <laughs> farming person, but yeah, there's some, there's some tips and tricks on how, how you do that. Today, uh, insect farming is actually uh, very high tech. Yeah. It's vertical farms, very big uh, like million dollar kind of investment uh, farms wow. uh, that are sort of, yeah, pretty futuristic. So you say. own a million dollar vertical insect farms somewhere Not in yet. the world? Not yet, <laughs> no. okay. We actually buy the insects okay. off the farm. So they've been making insects, uh, breeding insects for 30 years. Okay, and, and you're taking it farms. to the consumer then. So what yeah. are you doing? You're, you're producing, you're turning it into a variety of food stuff. So what sort of yeah. things that I, can we buy from Hey Planet? So there's, yeah, there's lots of people um, farming insects, but what we kind of haven't, where we haven't sort of cracked the code yet is how do we get people to eat insects? Mm. And so that's what we're focusing on, making really delicious uh, sort of, yeah, consumer-centric, whatever we call it, yeah. uh, products that, uh, that people actually want to eat and sort of can integrate into their, their daily diets. Mm. And so we started with... Uh, sort of this date confectionery. So we were very, like, from the beginning, we knew, okay, we're not going to start a restaurant and serve lave risotto because mm. if it was so hard for me to eat this lave mm. risotto, it's going to be really hard for other people as unless well. Unless you're going to Noma, right? Where well, you're sort of expecting yeah, to Yeah, unless you go to Noma. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, we really quickly just started experimenting with making insects into powder. And uh, we thought, where do you want really nutritious powder? So it could be, like, date bars, we sort of made different kind of date snacks. Um, in the way beginning, we rolled them in little gold dust and like dipped them into chocolate and stuff and went on Christmas markets. Mm. And, um, and after that, we made like, yeah, proper production of intake uh, protein bars. And now we also have a crisp bread and we're also making a, a minced meat, actually. Like a corn. Like a corn, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Without the soy. Without the yeah. soy. Okay, because obviously yeah. soy is not super sustainable, right? We're, you wouldn't, we're normally getting it from South America. There's a deforestation issue there, yeah. land usage space. Um, tell me a bit about, you know, if I, if I as a consumer, I don't know if you have this specific number, but I'm sure you've got some other numbers. If I was to replace a one hamburger a week with, a, uh, with an insect burger, I mean, what yeah. sort of impact are we, are we having? You would save 600 grams of CO2 yeah. and about 4,000 liters of water. So that's okay. a beef burger versus an wow. insect meat burger. Okay. Yeah. And and is and that lots of sorry and lots of land, lots of pesticides, yeah. uh, antibiotics as well. Yeah. 
Do you, do you have yeah. how many beef, how many insect burgers I've got to eat so that I can go on a plane trip to Thailand Ooh, for the winter? I'll have to get back okay. to you on that one. Yeah. I'd like that <laughs> yeah. I mean, because because I'm worried yeah. about that. Yeah. I have to say I've, yeah. I'm, I feel a little bit shortchanged that I've sort of entered my sort of my professional lifestyle life where I have now you know a bit of spare money. Yeah. I can maybe think about traveling a little bit, and then you know climate consciousness comes up and people yeah. are I'm basically like uh, maybe I shouldn't even get on a plane. Right? I seriously think about yeah. that and I'm like. Well, what I can tell you, yeah. though, is that actually changing your diet, I mean, transport is also a, a big one, yeah. but changing your diet is probably the single most effective mm. way of reducing your uh, CO2 emissions. Yeah. And is this important to you? I mean, is this part of the, I mean, we, why, finding your why and having that as a driving force behind your business is one of the, the themes that we've been talking about here in terms of you know, making sure that your, your transformation yeah. can take effect. Uh, to what extent is the climate question, you know, front of mind? It's like, it's what drives us really. And yeah. it's kind of what's, what gets us up uh, in the morning uh, is that we really actually want to make a difference here. And, mm. um, and the fact that this is something that has a huge impact means that we can. So if we get 100 people to, to replace 100 beef burgers, we've saved, you know, like, okay, I'm not very good at like doing <laughs> quick maths, <laughs> but it's like 50,000 liters of water or yeah, something. Like six, it's six like you tons can, of yeah, yeah, something, yeah. you know, and uh, I'll write the numbers down yeah. later. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. uh, but, um, but it's measurable and, uh, and that actually makes a really big impact. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of people don't actually know mm -hmm. how big an impact what they eat um, makes. Also, also just in terms of health, like we eat about three times as much red meat as we should be also just from a health perspective. Yeah. So it's 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 not just sustainability; it's also um, yeah. sort of personal health. And uh, when in your life did you, did you have a personal realization? Like, did you have a Greta Thunberg moment where you're like, "Whoa, I can't believe that I'm I'm flying uh, every other week to go to London to go shopping. I shouldn't yeah. be doing that." Not to, not to say that you did, but I mean, did you did you have a moment where you're like, "Whoa, like I'm really having an impact on the climate, and I need to do something about it." I guess I've always been a little bit one of these sort of conscious consumers well not when i was 13 maybe but yeah. in my sort of uh older years or whatever you yeah. say uh i think particularly the last four years now with with hey planet uh i've become much more aware also because it just feels so wrong to be preaching about eating insects and mm. then you know flying to thailand or something so so i definitely and also when you're measuring so much like what does eating this mean versus what does eating this mean like it becomes so a sort of uh, tangible mm. and so i think about it much like mm. it's a long time ago since i've bought a new uh what do you call piece of clothing yeah. uh, so i really try to like buy um re reuse stuff mm. and no red meat um trying to fly like minimum mm. but also having sort of a pragmatic like guess we are in this world yeah. which works in this way yeah. and stuff and i hope that we'll be able to fly in a more green way uh, yeah. soon right yeah i also yeah. hope so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, not that we can fly anywhere right now no, anyway, that we can fly, that's a, that is a good thing though yeah. i have to fly back to the yeah. uk oh, for okay, christmas yeah. let's see if let's see if they'll let me in yeah um I had a question for you which is about the psychological uh the psychological barrier because that yeah. really seems to be the, the the entry to market problem because I'm sure it's not yeah. super expensive to produce. I mean, sometimes I go into the supermarket and I think, okay, maybe I'd like a steak for the first time in two months and I look at it, I'm like, well, that's pretty expensive. Yeah. Um, so I think insects probably aren't are just expensive, less expensive. What's the, what's the price point? And um, if that's not the barrier, how do you get people over this psychological barrier of, mm. of eating insects? So in terms of price, uh, it should be much cheaper than meat because takes much fewer resources to produce insects. Uh, the problem is that the meat uh, industry gets huge amounts of subsidies. Mm. Uh, so that's what makes, you know, you can buy a kilo of beef uh, in factor, or sorry, not to mention a particular, any supermarket, you can buy a kilo of beef of beef for, I don't know, like 60 krona or yeah. like below, right? Which is really, really cheap when you mm. think about Okay, this comes from a cow that's lived X amount of years, which has eaten so much feed. Like that's just really, really much cheaper than it's sort of. It's not the true cost if you can no. uh, of of what it's actually cost to produce that and how many resources yeah. have gone into that. Uh, and that's very interesting, right? It's all of these subsidies that go into products that make them look cheaper than yeah. they really are. Fossil fuels are also heavily subsidised yeah. as well, and moving these subsidies. So I'm sure you know. I don't know if you even work on that level. Are you working on a sort of an EU? Is that are there EU initiatives to to expand the 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 
the agricultural policy to, f to cover insects as yeah. well? Do you do any of this campaigning? The, yeah, we're a little bit involved. I mean, not sort of so much directly, but we know like all the uh, insect farms are very involved in trying. So right. insects actually isn't um, isn't legal in all of EU okay. yet. So there's not a harmonized law yet. So it's just like individual countries saying whether they sort of allow it or not. So mm. luckily Denmark allows it. And uh, also Sweden just said that they allow it now as well. And so Denmark was before Sweden on that so one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That surprises like four me. four years before. I have to say, yeah, that surprises four years, me. Yeah. yeah, okay. Germany also we can sell there and uh, Belgium and the UK. Okay, that's yeah. fantastic. Um, just, to, I mean, because we're rounding up, we've yeah. got just a few, a few minutes left. I, I'd like to... It sounds like it was sort of always in you, this this entrepreneurial. Uh, you what is that the case? Uh, did you always see yourself as 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 going solo, making your own business, or yeah? Or what was mm, your journey? I think that? definitely what was always in me was this sort of purpose-driven way of working, and I didn't always know whether that was going to be an NGO or the UN or an embassy or whatever. Mm. But um, it was sort of the feeling like you're having an impact on yeah. the world. Uh, so, uh, yeah, luckily I found out that being entrepreneur actually means that all that energy and all that sort of will that you have to want to change the world, just it goes just super quickly when you when you start your own company. Yeah. Uh, and you actually do have an impact really yeah. fast. Whereas if you're in a big sort of bureaucracy or something like the UN, that mm. can also be really great and really super fantastic experience and all that. But you don't necessarily feel like you're getting anywhere with it or yeah. that you're actually changing anything with it. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually hear that quite a lot about uh, international organizations mm. that people, it, it draws in a lot of people who have a lot of passion yeah. and desire to change the world and they, and they, it doesn't work for everybody. Let's put it like that. I'm sure it works yeah. for some people who appreciate, who can work within bureaucracies and can make a difference yeah. within those because you can certainly make a difference within these organizations, but maybe not for everybody. So, so this, yeah. this purpose driven, um, this purpose-driven approach, I mean, did you, it was just in you all along or, did, or was it something that was cultivated? Was it, did you have mentors? Did you have people um, helping you to sort of discover this? Was it your environment? What was the... Yeah, I guess. I mean, of course, like your family and like wherever I've traveled as a, as a kid and stuff like all these impacts always sort of have an effect on you. And I guess also actually like studying at CBS, we had this sustainability uh, topic as well and sort of... I had the sort of the cultural CBS uh, um, line, right? So that yeah. I was kind of always thinking about those aspects, like a little bit more sort of globalization yeah. terms. So I guess it's a little bit always been in me, but definitely also been impacted by the environment um, around me. And the same with Milena, I guess. Like, mm. yeah. Have you have you made any really big mistakes in in making Hey Planet? That you know you've moved on from, but anything that you sort of you look back and be like, I kind of wish we could have done that a little bit differently. Something that you've learned along the way. Yeah, we've learned a lot yeah. along the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, yeah, I can't even say one mistake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe getting a product on the market which wasn't tested well enough. Okay. So we end up ha ha we ended up having to take it back. Okay. Which is really expensive. Yeah. <laughs> So okay, but yeah. it was the first time you did it, I suppose, and yeah. you learned and you learned from that. And we that. learned a lot, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, and and being an entrepreneur, I mean, uh, that we have had so many different types of people on the stage. You know, this would probably be the last question. Um, have you? Do you think there's a lot of myths about what it takes to be the sort of person that starts starts your own business and runs it? Um, or yeah, I guess there's a lot of sort of glamour and a lot of like you just gotta sort of give it your all, and you know you work. 80 hours a week or whatever and we did work like 70 hours a week or whatever for a period of time but now not that we're not, like now we're also learning to work in a more sort of effective way mm. and sort of better at planning uh we both have kids now and okay. that's working out okay for us actually and uh so but yeah that would have been difficult right when we had started if yeah. we had to like little yeah kids but um but it's 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 working out all right like it's possible that's fantastic yeah, yeah we've had you you're certainly not the first person we've had on stage who started a business and had a family at the yeah. same time and has made it work and has and has made a difference i think it's, it's a really inspiring story and i'm um, thinking we're going to go and, and taste a few i think you've brought some insects yeah. with you i'm definitely going to give it a go good now all right uh we're going to close this section right now. We're going to be back in five minutes. We're going to do a little bit of a roundup. Um, at three o'clock, we're going to start uh, the CBS Startup Awards. Okay, see you then. <laughs>